this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. Thanking you for blessing us to come together this morning to hear a word from you up on high. We pray, Lord, those who are here this morning, we ask you, Heavenly Father, it is your will that you will bless us in a mighty special way. And then those may be on their way this morning, Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to have mercy and bless them to make it your safety. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen and thank God.
eternal Father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come this morning. Thank you, first of all, you being God and God all by yourself. Lord, we ask if it's your will that you will forgive us of our sin, Lord. Father, because when we look around and even, Lord, when we see how this old wicked world is getting worse, Lord. Mm -hmm. So, Father, if you will, those who came out this morning, Lord God, I don't know for what reason, but I know in my heart to uh, pray your holy and divine name. But, Father, whatever they stand in the need of, Lord, that you would grant it, Father God. But you said in your word, whatever we ask, we will receive. But Father, give us that faith that we may have when we ask something, we can believe it, that it's gonna come. Lord, I wanna say thank you. Many, many times in our lives, Lord, we wanna do, let's give up, throw in the towel. But for some reason, Lord, enough, you, you send your spirit down to comfort us, Lord. Even when we are in our troubled trouble times, Lord. When things don't seem, things seem hopeless, Lord, you always send your Holy Spirit to comfort us. So, Lord, somebody here this morning may stand in the need of a blessing. May just stand in the need of your holy divine word, Lord. Father, we just ask you if it's your will this morning. Use the man of God that he may break the bread of life to us this morning. Make it so what we can all understand it, Lord. Because when we hear it, Lord, we won't just let be a hearer of your word. We will begin to be a doer of your holy divine word. Lord, I used to hear the old saint said, I'm going to stand on the word of God, even if it take me out of here. So Lord, if you will this morning, stop by St. John just a little while, Lord. Allow your spirit to set our heart in our mind, Lord. That's when we leave this secret and holy place, Lord. We don't know without a doubt that we got, we got, we got you on our side, Lord. Because, Lord, it would be a shame we die and leave this place and don't know you, Lord. But, Lord, right now, why the blood of death running warm in our family? Bless us with a word this day. Bless those who seek your prayer, whatever it may be, Lord. Father, I know that you will. I know that you can. Because you done came through for me many times. I don't even deserve to be here, Lord, but you continue to bless me. You continue to give me strength when I'm weak, Lord. You continue to build me up, Lord. Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, you don't bless me with a, a home, Lord, that I don't have to worry about paying in the rent anymore. So, Lord, I know ain't nobody but you, Lord. You don't bless me and my wife, Lord. We might be struggling, Lord. We might be going through this and that, but, Lord, you keep on blessing us, Lord. Lord. Let that not just St. John, but every church go within your name. Lord, I'm ready to realize I got to stand with you, Lord. Because when it's all over, said and done, I want to look back and say, thank you, Lord, because I know it was you that brought me through here. I know it was you that all the best is going to be when I get to heaven, Lord. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, right now. But Lord, keep on blessing St. John. Then those who by the radio, Lord, are by internet. Let them realize 
praise. Thank you for the son that gave his life in a turn he had to go through, Lord. And we want to say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that you bless the guilds in a mighty special way. We thank you for their tithes and we thank you for their offering. And then we pray that you bless the church, St. John, to use these tithes and offering in a way which is pleasing to your side. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, God.
that you touch them in a mighty special way. Warm the sick, we pray that you just bless them in a mighty special way. Once we have been sick, God, and you bless them to be able to be with us today, we want to say thank you. Because we realize, God, that you have power to do all things. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us. And in the bereaved families, Brother Caesar's uncle, which passed away, we pray that you just bless him in a mighty special way. And in his heart, we pray that you just touch her body in the name of Jesus. We know you can. Yes, Lord. We know you will. I am whatever way that you bless her and her family. We know, God, that you have power to do all things. And then Sister John. We pray that you bless her family in a mighty special way. For her sisters passed away and she's gone home. Be with them right now because it's in times like these when we miss our loved ones. It's times like these when we want to call them on the phone and say hello to them. But we can't. But God just bless them in a mighty special way. And this is Church St. John. We pray that you bless each and every one of us. Yes, bless us. I heard someone say that we get ourselves like we should be. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Bind Satan from yes, our midst. Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Yes, and thank you, God. Indeed, it is a, a blessing to be able to see each and every one of you all. Amen. Amen. I had the opportunity to talk to the McCoy family the other day. Amen. Sister Brian, Sister Zilla, Sister McCoy is doing good. She had a shot. Amen. Good when we read God's 
word that God talked to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us begin to read verse 12. Verse good seed. Let us read verse 12 together. Amen? Amen. Let's begin. Well, therefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Thank you, Usher. I, I want to tag this today when no one is looking. When no one is looking. One time, several years ago, my grandfather and other men were sitting on the porch. And I heard one say something about our new neighbor. And he said, that man has quite a character. Within a few weeks, the man next door, he knew more women in our neighborhood than the other men. And this man, he never came home before 2 a.m. It wasn't his character that earned him that the man was talking about his character. This certain man, he was not committing about this man's character, he was committed about his reputation. And then a few months later, we found out that the man next door, he worked the evening shift. And he worked at a lingerie factory. And apparently, he was bringing samples to the women in our neighborhood. But these certain men that talked about him, they was all wrong. Mm -hmm. The Bruins' famous head coach, John Wooden, once said, be more concerned with your character than your reputation. All right, all right. Because your character is what you really are. All right. yep. While your reputation is merely what others think you are. All right, all right. All right. Uh -huh. And the true test is merely, uh, the true test of a man's character is what he does when no one is looking. All right, amen. Yep. So in our scripture text, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul is giving the church at Philippi a compliment. Mm -hmm. All right. And apparently, word had gotten to Paul mm -hmm. that the members of this early Christian church they were being obedient to the commands of Christ, uh -huh. even in his absence. All right, man. Yep. In other words, they were doing yep. Yep. the right thing, even though Paul wasn't there. Amen. Are you with the church? Amen. Doing the right thing when no one 
is looking, mm -hmm. that's what man calls integrity. Right. Yeah. However, God calls it something else. He calls it obedience. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. The expectation is that those who confess Christ will be willing to follow and obey to the gospel of Christ and live mm -hmm. yeah. according to the spirit rather than the flesh. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But wrapped in Paul's compliments to the church at Philippi is a seemingly peculiar statement, at least on the surface. So Paul tells the Philippians church to work out your own salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling. All right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so what is Paul <clears throat> saying here? Is he saying uh, there is more to salvation than confessing Christ as your Savior? If the church at Philippi is already converted and they're already being obedient to Christ's commands, so why do they have to work out their own salvation? You see, that's, that's something for us to think about, church. Now, now, Why did these people have to work out their own salvation? Now, it's natural to wonder what Paul is trying to summarize here. So, so, so what happened, his brother said, it, is that I had to go to my commentary and study Bible to get clarification on this. Amen. You see, the word salvation mm -hmm. is the grace inclusive word of the gospel mm -hmm. because it has wrapped into it all of the redemptive acts and process of scriptures. Mm -hmm. So what are you saying, preacher? Mm -hmm. Salvation includes justification, redemption, grace, forgiveness, <clears throat> sanctification, and glorification. Now, if you look at the Hebrew word and the Greek word for salvation, implies that even more are included. They include deliverance, safety, preservation, Hidden and soundness. But what I also found mm -hmm. was that the word salvation mm -hmm. has three tests. The past, the present, and the future. All right. And, and that's what we need to examine today. And the first is salvation. Mm -hmm. It means we are saved from the guilt and the penalty of past sins. Mm -hmm. Did you hear the church? Mm -hmm. This is the one we easily understand. We get this, you see. It means that we are forgiven, washed clean, mm -hmm. made whole. All our past sins mm -hmm. no longer ring over us. It's just like a bad dream. We are released from the burden of carrying around the weight of guilt and pain. This makes sense to us because we need it to make sense to us. You see, you see, we know without a doubt in our mind that we need forgiveness. Amen. And Christ has the power to forgive us. This sacrifice on the cross gave him the power to forgive us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And though and though the preaching 
uh, the cross is foolishness to those who refuse to believe Christ. Uh, to those of us who accept him, we are saved mm -hmm. by his power. Amen. We are forgiven of our past carnal attitude. We are forgiven of our shady past and our shameful deeds. Amen. We are forgiven by our vulgar mind and our bitter attitudes and our proud look, our deceitful actions and our ugly gestures and our sinful desires. Amen. We are forgiven of all of it once we confess it all. Because we believe in Christ and when we believe in Christ, we don't mind going to Christ and asking him of the gift. Yeah. Our new birth, it leaves us with a clean slate. Yeah. What a reviving and relieving thought. That's salvation in the past tense. Amen. Then my next point, salvation, it means that we are saved mm -hmm. from the habit of dominion of sin. That's salvation in the present tense. In other words, what it's saying, it covers all the sins we are committing or will commit after we are saved. Amen. Yep. Don't get quiet on me because sometimes we act like we don't see it. Help me, somebody. Uh -huh. You see, we as children of God. Supposed to be a sweet savor of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's in 2 Corinthians 2 and 15. But sometimes, right? Sometimes. Sometimes we slip up more often than we care to admit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, sometimes we, we, we think uh -huh. that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. We try to convince people that we are holy for a few hours on Sunday. But they know how you act and where you go and some know what you do when you leave here on Sunday morning. It's not just that Christ don't have the power to stop us from doing what we are doing. The problem is that while the spirit is willing, the flesh gets weak. Amen. Yeah. And you see, that, I, I want you to read this here. Turn your Bible real fast. Turn your Bible real fast over to Romans 8. Romans 8. When you get to Romans 8, look at verse 2. Yet while we, we, we may still commit sin 
our salvation. And this, this is what's hard for some people to realize and remember this. While we, while we may still commit sin, we keep our salvation. Because in the present tense, we are living, now watch this here, we are living under grace. Under grace, not the law, we can't do it. But we are living under grace. And you see, we ought to tell somebody God's grace is sufficient. All right. If, if it wasn't, we'll be in serious trouble. Amen. Because, let me, let me see if I can help us here. And I'm going to help us here just for a little bit and I'm going to get out of here. It, 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 those cigarettes, you used to smoke, you still smoke them. Those cuss words we used to use, we're still. You still know how to use them. You still know how to use them. And the white buttons get pushed, they come up. Amen. <laughs> that gossip <laughs> that we used to use, yes, we still use it. Uh -huh. Are you with me, church? Yes, that brew. I may not say that too loud. That brew. That we used to drink, uh -huh. you still drink. <laughs> and, and maybe, maybe I didn't hit somebody. <laughs> that magazine, that, that Playboy magazine, Come on, that you used to buy, <laughs> you still buy. <laughs> Those office supplies, uh -huh. when you work on your job and you used to. You still steal it. Are you with me? Sin nature is like a blood clot in your body. And, and, and if you are not saved, you can go, it, it can go straight to your heart. And sadly, for many Christians, it has. I, I, I think that sometimes we, we say that we're saved. But we still keep on doing the same old thing over and over. We, we, we have too many Christians in the present face of their salvation who have lost their passion for Christ. I think I said it again. We got too many people, too many Christians in the present face who has lost their passion for Christ. Instead of walking in the spirit, they're just walking. Instead of singing for joy, they're just singing. Instead of fighting for a good fight, they're just fighting. Are you with me? And instead of working for the Lord, they just work it. And, and many times, people are hollering at their children of God, but they're working for themselves. Now, what does God say? And what does God expect for us in this present tense of our salvation? Do you remember these words? In Luke 9 and 23, he's, Jesus said, If any man will come after me. Yeah. Let him what? Deny, Deny him. himself and take up his cross and follow me what? Daily. daily. You see, we ought to follow him daily. Did, did you hear that? We ought to follow him. You see, our salvation mm -hmm. should move us to perform our Christian duty daily. You can't be a Christian this Sunday and hellish the rest of the three weeks. In other words, we got to study God's word. So the reason why we study God's word is to teach us. Because we got family, we got children, we got grandkids, we got our 
are polished up our performance as Christians. And salvation means that, that we are saved in a sense uh, just like Christ was. That's the future tense of our salvation. While we are being permanent by the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is one that requires patience. Hebrews 10 and 36, it tells us, uh, for ye have need of patience. Mm -hmm. yeah. That after ye have done the will of God, mm -hmm. that you might receive the promise. Yeah. So, so in other words, eternal life. My brothers and sisters, it's what we should be as children of God looking for. And you see, salvation does not reveal itself in its fullness. Now watch what I say here. Salvation mm -hmm. does not reveal itself in its fullness until the very end of our journey. That's, that's, that's why when, when we start getting a little old, mm -hmm. things start to change mm -hmm. in our lives. In other words, what I'm saying is when you flip down and you can't get up like you used to. Mm -hmm. you, you can't see like you used to see. Oh, yeah. it, it, it ought to start changing our attitudes and our goodness that we have for the Lord. You see, you see, my brothers and sisters, our salvation, it covers the past, the present, mm -hmm. and the future. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to tell us is we all have work yeah. that we need to be doing. Oh, yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So my fellows and my brothers and my sisters. You see, let us be like the church at Philippi. You see, they honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, I get ready to leave us. Amen. But we find uh, my brothers and my sisters. Yeah. I would tell you it said, my beloved, and he have all ways obey. Mm -hmm. Not as in my presence only, uh -huh. but how much more in my absence. Oh, yeah. And then he goes on and said, work out your own salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying uh, to tell us this morning uh, is that on this Christian journey, uh -huh. I come to remind us that each of us, uh, we must work out our own salvation. Yeah, yeah. Am I right about it? Uh, and we need to make sure that we take this seriously because time uh, is moving on. Am I right about it? Uh, there's a song, uh, Reverend Hills, and this man uh, is a songster by the name of Douglas Miller. And I heard him say, uh, when I see Jesus, amen. And in this song, I heard him say, I learn how to live holy. Am I right about it? And I heard him say, I learn how to live right. Am I right about it? And I heard him say, I learn how to suffer.
church and hit him and knocked his car about 50 or 60 yards. Am I right about it? When he got out of church, he began to thank God for what God has done for him. And what I'm trying to tell you, when no one is looking up, God is. He's there still knocking. 
with at least one this morning. If not, you may be seated.
Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we come thanking you for blessing us to be here this day. We thank you, Father, for the word that you gave us today. We pray, Lord, that we will apply to our everyday life. And then we pray for our members who wasn't here. For whatever reason, we ask you, Lord, continue to bless them in a mighty special way. And then bless every family represented here today. Lord, that we will leave here in peace, but always be in God's holy and righteous presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.